In June 2018, Dyson won a court battle against Shark and won $60 million in damages over claims they advertised falsehoods. This case is very interesting for several reasons I'll outline in this video. Firstly, it shows some of the really disgusting practices that shady companies use to try and peddle inferior products and compete with Dyson's industry-leading technology. Secondly, it highlights the need to justify factual marketing claims with objective evidence that's independently verifiable. When that doesn't happen, you end up in a situation like Shark. Shark have frequently singled out and attacked Dyson in their highly questionable and aggressive marketing and infomercials, given that Dyson are market leaders with products widely regarded as best in the industry. Unsurprisingly, kicking a hornet's nest meant they eventually got stung. In 2014, Shark started making very strong yet unproven advertising claims such as America's most recommended vacuum and superior performance. Dyson complained to the National Advertising Review Board and the National Advertising Division. These are bodies set up to settle disputes of this nature outside of court. Both bodies ruled in Dyson's favour and concluded Shark had abused language and misled in its advertising to gain market share. CNET, if good for nothing else, produced a nice article linked to in the description summarising this incident. Shark at one point tried to sue Dyson in a manner that seemed like petty tit for tat. Much earlier, in 2013, Dyson had used the marketing slogan, twice the suction of any other vacuum. This was empirically observed to be a true statement and they had the evidence to back it up. Much later, Shark released a new product which rendered that statement false. They tried to sue Dyson retroactively and in a manner that comes across as very opportunistic claiming the continuation of what had been a true statement was hurting their growth. Despite Dyson having not been incorrect in their claim until then, Dyson agreed to remove the slogan in good faith, spend an almost a million dollars to replace packaging and settle the dispute out of court, which Shark accepted. In fairness, Dyson should have known there's more to performance than just suction alone, and arguably it was a marketing misstep and may explain why they didn't fight it. A second article in the description provides more details on the story and is commonly found cloned in other articles on the web. Unfortunately, Shark didn't appear to learn its lesson in the apparent savage pursuit of profit, and the continued abuse of marketing language over time started to hurt Dyson financially, which they felt was undue and unfair. As such, they sought the help of the courts. Later in 2014, Dyson had filed suit over claims that Shark's rotator-powered lift-away vacuums model NV650, cleans carpets better than Dyson's DC65 vacuum, asserting claims were based on independent lab testing. Dyson were denied on what appears to be dodgy legal technicalities revolving around providing evidence at specific times that can be read about in detail in the third link in the description. Incidentally, what may interest many about this link is that it contains excerpts from an American industry standard outlining formal test methodologies to determine cleaning performance. Both Shark and Dyson agreed in court that such methodologies are the golden standard by which to judge performance, in stark contrast I might add to amateurish and fallacious YouTube bedroom testing. It's worth reading at least that portion of this document just to better appreciate how thoroughly and professionally independent testing is conducted and the statistical treatment it receives. The shaky legal grounds on which Dyson's initial claim was rejected was later verified by their recent victory which I'll discuss now. Despite the initial rejection in court, Dyson knew they were in the right because they had the evidence which had originally seemingly been denied a fair looking. As such, they requested a full trial by jury, which is apparently rare for false advertising claims, showing just how passionate about truth they are, and that they feel liars and deceivers shouldn't be allowed to get away with foul play. The fourth link in the description provides a formal request to court made by the law firm they hired. The document is an essential read and meticulously outlines their rationale for this action. In short, Dyson complained that several claims and the data advertised by Shark was outright false and misleading, and summarised the evidence showing it. Dyson's complaint document shows key infomercial plots and figures used in Shark's aggressive and misleading advertising. Again, this document is well worth a careful read, and I can't stress this enough. The fifth link in the description is also an essential read. Similar to the third link, it provides a full summary of the court proceedings of this 10-day trial. 
you really should make the effort to read it, as it's very interesting and informative, and gives some insight into how courts operate in cases like this, and what goes on behind the closed doors. I wanted to pick out some highlights of the astonishing evidence presented to the jury, which shows just how shadily Sharp behaved, why Dyson was so upset, and why no one worth their weight in salt should be respecting a company with Shark's behaviour or supporting their products. I was so gobsmacked, and it was the principal reason why I had to make this video. In fact, as shown in the sixth link in the description, Dyson actually cited that one of the reasons they went to trial was to publicly err the facts of this case so people were aware. Well, here they are in their full shameful glory. Shark told consumers that independent lab tests prove that the Shark rotator powered liftaway deep cleans carpets better than the latest $600 Dyson, whilst displaying this bar graph to try and visually quantify the amount. According to the court transcript document in the fifth link in the description, Shark actually admitted in court this was all wrong. It turns out data in the graph was actually based on their seemingly unobjective and flawed internal tests, not on advertised independent tests. Even more insultingly, the independent testing that Shark did commission by a company called Intertech actually found the exact opposite to what was advertised, and that Dyson's machine outperformed Shark's in the industry tests, which again, Shark even admitted in court when forced to under oath. Dyson's own internal testing came to the same conclusion, which shows, unlike Shark's internal testing, that Dyson's internal testing is robust, objective and trustworthy. Dyson also commissioned additional independent testing separately from a company called IBR to conduct industry standard tests. The company confirmed a third time that Dyson's machine was superior, in contrast to Shark's advertised graph and associated visuals. Mountains of evidence from multiple different and independent sources all confirming the same conclusion and illustrated pure deceit and deception by Shark. The single most important message from this is that, as I've said countless times in my videos, factual claims of this nature are easy to make, but you must have evidence to back them up, because if someone calls you out, you'll not be able to defend yourself, meaning on YouTube you'll look stupid and amateurish, or if a big company marketing those claims, you'll get sued for millions. The trial went on to describe how Dyson were damaged, and why Shark should, and ultimately had to, pay $16 million from the profits they seemingly illegally acquired by scheming the public and falsely damaging the image of their court-confirmed superior competitor. Shark's lack of comment and apparent lack of humility after the verdict iced the cake of shame. It's worth reflecting on why this case is such a big deal. Just as when Hoover were found to have essentially cheated, stolen and lied back in 2000, the link to the story is the seventh in the description. This case reflects devastatingly on Shark's reputation. Dyson were awarded 91% of the maximum possible fine by an American jury ruling against an American company in favour of a foreign one. That shows just how guilty Shark were. All the evidence presented publicly since litigation began in 2014 means Shark now has a reputation of being a treacherous liar that sells proven inferior products using shady tactics. In contrast, Dyson have been shown to be a relatively more respectable company that doesn't market false claims. They base marketing claims on high quality objective data. They may spin those marketing claims in a way that sell favour like all companies, but ultimately Dyson's claims are truthful. They thus have credibility and have an image of being trustworthy. Not basing your claims on evidence and relying on misleading demonstrations is dangerous. Dyson appear to care about what's true and aggressively pursue it. They pioneer and innovate technology that really works, whilst others copy or peddle gimmicks. Dyson achieve this because they invest primarily in scientific research and development, rather than just lining their pockets, the advantage of not having shareholders to appease. Dyson as a company adopts many of the practices and philosophies I value, and hence why it features so much on my channel. This entire case and verdict also says so much about the rabid zealotry I observe from those who one-dimensionally favour brands in a mindlessly tribalistic way. Often Shark's brand supporters are Dyson haters, and the illusion Shark has provided in marketing is the closest thing to the technological Dyson experience they can get. But that mindless brand loyalty 
has all been based on a lie that no one but the best fact-checked. It's difficult to respect support for Shark now, as their credibility is shot. Their products are repeatedly measured to be inferior to Dyson's by multiple independent testers, including Shark's own. And Shark are apparently now convicted liars, possibly justifying a product boycott until some contrition is shown. The moral of the story? Even when all you care about is profiteering from gullibility, always tell the truth. <laughs>